those times, traffic. <laughs> Just trying to avoid the 40 minute mark. Hell yeah. <laughs> Freeway. Wow, okay. But you said 20 women. You couldn't get 20 women to go find interview over. Interview over? My bad. Why you need? What's going on? Interviews help artists become more well-known by introducing them to new audiences and encouraging people to check out their music or follow them on social media. Interviews are essential for up-and-coming musicians and influencers. However, it is possible for interviews to go wrong because the interviewer could ask dumb questions that spoil the entire interview. In this video we look at influencers and rappers who walked out of an interview. The first one on the list is Lil Wayne, he was asked about how he felt about Black Lives Matter. Black Lives Matter is a decentralized political and social movement that seeks to highlight racism, discrimination, and racial inequality experienced by black people and to promote anti-racism. Its primary concerns are police brutality and racially motivated violence against black people. Lil Wayne was asked, what were his thoughts on Black Lives Matter? He looked confused like he did not catch the question. The interviewer continued with a thorough explanation. What's your thought on, on Black Lives Matter? What is it? What, what do you mean? The idea is that there's this movement called Black Lives Matter thinking that the rest of America didn't seem to understand that, that Black Lives Matter. Lil Wayne responded by calling the movement weird, and that he is a rich black man and he cannot relate to what police do to black people, and the movement has nothing to do with him. It just sounds weird. I don't know that you put a name on. It's not a name. It's not whatever, whatever. It's somebody got shot by police and for a up reason. I am a young, black, rich If that don't let you know that America understand black matter these days, I don't know what it is. Don't come at me with that dumb man. My life matter, especially to my the interviewer asked Wayne if he separates himself from the Black Lives Matter, in response Lil Wayne said yes and told the reporter, you must be crazy if you think I am part of the movement. Wayne pulled out a red flag and said he is part of the red flag, he wanted to say he belongs to the Bloods. At this point the interview was over. Do you separate yourself from the- I don't feel connected to a damn thing that ain't got nothing to do with me. If you do you crazy, you. Connected to this flag right as I'm connected. I'm a gang banger man. I'm connected. Next up is Kodak Black, who was interviewed on Hot 97 a while back in 2018. Things became heated when he was questioned about his case of sexual abuse. Kodak was sentenced to probation for assaulting a teenage girl in a South Carolina hotel room. Kodak was originally charged with rape, but accepted a deal and pleaded guilty to first-degree assault at the Florence County Courthouse. The assault happened in 2016 when Kodak was in Florence for a performance. The girl said the rapper attacked her at a hotel room after the show, biting her on the neck and breast and continuing even after she told him to stop. Although Kodak was unable to discuss the subject in an open manner during the Hot 97 interview, this matter was still under investigation, the hosts showed no concern and still asked about it. Look man, at this point it's a pleasure to meet you man, um, you know, looking at all your, your cases and everything you've been through, and I know the recent one right now is very sensitive, and with respect to, you know, everybody involved in that case, you know, we can't get into details today. Um, but, you know, we take sexual assault here serious and we can't, you know, uh, get into details, but we hope, you know, to have you back so we can have a, a deeper conversation about that because, you know, this is a serious topic and we're hearing these stories a lot. Kodak appears uneasy about the topic being raised, his demeanor abruptly shifts, leaving him unsure of how to react. Then, noticing that Kodak was uneasy, a different host changed the subject. Um, one thing we were talking about in the show today that for some reason I just have a hunch that you would care about. The idea that landing on the moon was a conspiracy. Kodak, do you believe that our moon landing in 1969 actually took place? In response, 
Kodak said what the f you guys talking about. Ebro went back to the sexual abuse matter, telling Kodak that he seems upset. In response, Kodak stated that rather than talking on music, the media constantly highlights the negative aspects of rappers. Kodak attempted to get Ebro to switch the subject, but Ebro would not leave the case of sexual assault alone. Eventually, Kodak lost patience and left the studio. What the f y'all talking about? <laughs> <laughs> you seem upset that I brought it up. I feel like <clears throat> sometimes when niggas like be going through shit, like y'all be entertained by people. You know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Or like change the subject on from the walk out. We'll change which subject? Just whatever. Like, well, no, they the, tried to change the subject. They was talking about the moon landing. That's bullshit too. So uh -huh. talk about something else. Well, I was saying, I, I think well, we I don't th have to talk about nothing else. We could be done right here. All right, I'm going. That's a bummer. Uh, I don't know. I don't, people don't tell me what to talk about on my show. Next on the list is 50 Cent. As you all know 50 Cent is well known for beefs in the hip-hop game. In a complex interview, he was asked about his relationship with French Montana. The origins of the beef between the two began over an allegedly rented Bugatti and then escalated when 50 Cent accused French Montana of faking streams to raise his status in hip-hop. The interviewer asked 50 Cent if him and French Montana had squashed their beef. 50 Cent replied that there was no beef between him and French Montana. For sure. Uh, 50, I guess I'll get you out on this. It seems as though it all started with playful banter. It still seems that way to me, but what's up with French? Are you guys cool? Are you not cool? I don't really have interest in it. Like, there's not much going on. But the interviewer kept on pushing 50 Cent to open up and speak about the beef, claiming 50 once pressed Montana in a club in Miami. 50 Cent replied saying, why would I do something like that, he seemed irritated by the statement made by the interviewer. 50 stood up and ended the interview. There, there was rumors that you snuffed him in a club in Miami or something, is there any truth to any of that? No, there's no truth to that. Okay. Would I do a thing like that? I don't know, if I wouldn't put it past you. Why would you think that way? Would you think Will Smith would do that? I, would I can't believe Will you would say these things about me. <laughs> I'm not saying them about you, the, the internet said these things would about you. you. I think this, this guy right here would assault French Montana. <laughs> On this one we have Crip Mac, one of the most hated Crip in hip-hop. Crip Mac is well known for being affiliated with the late Nipsey Hussle, he had beefs with many people within the hip-hop industry especially those who degrade Nipsey. On a podcast with Cam Capone, Crip Mac was acting funny the whole interview. Crip Mac was focused on his phone the whole time, he would answer the question and go back to his phone not caring about the interview. I don't understand this question, so I don't know actually what this guy is talking about, but maybe you do. He says, ask him, this is a good, he goes, this is a good question, would be, ask him about how he got into it with Bloods in San Diego. Bloods in San Diego. Oh, the Asian Crip shop here, Cam, we we'll get a video. That's new, they didn't like, they said, uh, they said, fuck yeah. You find me, they said, fuck yeah, so pretty much, all right, can they my video? Come on. Uh, Snella! After a while, Capone noticed that Crip Mac's thoughts were elsewhere. He inquired as to whether Crip Mac was not enjoying the interview, but Crip Mac insisted that Capone ask more questions. Capone ended up cutting the interview short. I don't really seem like you, you're feeling this, bro. I don't wanna... I'm gonna answer all the questions. I'm gonna give you all your time you want. You know, maybe we should eat. Grab something to eat. That's still the same, kid. I, I, I'm, you know, I, like I told you, kid, it's, it's almost trap o'clock already. You see what I'm saying? I'm trying to take care of this shit while she lollygags out there with a dick in her ass, so... Trying to get some fucking Popeye's chicken. Mm. Any more questions? Any good questions? I'm done. So here's your 
Following the Capone interview, Crip Mac appeared on the No Jumper show to discuss the situation. He insulted Capone and called him names. Crip Mac asserted that he became uncomfortable in the interview when Capone asked him if he had ever been sexually assaulted while incarcerated. I thought you you asked or he asked you if anyone f you in the ass in prison or something. Oh, he asked about if was dead. Yeah. He asked you that in an interview. Can I ask me in the interview? And it never came out because you no, flipped out. No, uh, Lupe, Lupe will keep it Forty Sixth Street. She has the the video. No, she didn't. She didn't have it, but he said it, and that's when we left about that mother. You couldn't. That was way over the line. It's, 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 oh, that's, that's more than play with like uh, that. You don't yeah. play with no Capone clarified that Crip Mac's nervousness and constant phone use were caused by the fact that he was under house arrest and wearing an ankle monitor. So we get to the point where now we're doing this interview and he's acting weird the whole interview. You know, like, like he's telling me he wants to do the interview. Like there's times during the interview, like I asked him, is everything cool? And he's like, yeah, yeah, let's do it. But here's some more context for you is his ankle monitor, the battery on it is running out. So he's like stressed the whole interview. Like he's worried about his ankle monitor, he's worried about his batteries running out because you know, you, you know, he could go back to jail for it. You know what I'm saying? If the battery runs out, it's a violation, you know, and he's done. Let us move on to the next rapper. ESTGE walked out of an interview with Bootleg Kev when he was asked about his football career. ESTG is from Louisville, Kentucky. After graduating high school in 2012, Stone received a football scholarship to Indiana State University and majored in communications. He spent two years there before transferring to Sac City College. After just a year he transferred again to Stephen F. Austin University. ESTG dropped out of college in 2016. He was arrested for drug trafficking in the same year and was sentenced to four months of house arrest. During 2017, he was briefly on the CFL team the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. During his house arrest, Stone became motivated to pursue a rap career after watching Lil Baby perform on TV. He initially adopted the name Big G before switching to ESTG in which EST is an acronym for Everybody Shines Together. He released his debut song, Stains, as Big G on YouTube on December 17, 2017. In January 2021, ESTG signed a deal with Yo Gotti's collective music group, CMG. During the interview Bootleg Kev brought up a topic about ESTG once being a football player. Bootleg Kev told ESTG that he saw a video of him during his high school and college days when he was a football player. ESTG asked Bootleg Kev, what does that have to do with his rap career? In response, Bootleg Kev said he was a huge fan of football. And that you're going to Indiana State and... What's a YouTube video called? I don't know. I just literally typed in ESTG football highlights. And I was like, damn, this dude was a beast. You played linebacker, right? What do I got to do with music and shit right now? No, I'm just curious because I'm a big football fan. So like, I'm just like, I just, I, I'm a huge football fan. And I find it fascinating that like you really like have like a real high level like football run. You know what I'm saying? The football question seems to put ESTG off. When Bootleg Kev noticed that ESTG was becoming bored, he questioned him about signing with CMG. Before Bootleg Kev could finish his question, ESTG stood up and left. That's fair. <laughs> um, I was going to ask you, like, when it comes to, I remember when you signed with Gotti. I remember the, the viral moment where there was just all this cash. And at that time, I feel like there was like a bidding war going on for ESTG at that moment. Um, one, what made you rock with Gotti? And what is something over the last two or three years that you have learned? Let me... L.A. rapper Poke, who grew up on the Colden and Figueroa block, stopped by No Jumper to talk about being blackballed in the industry and other matters. 
Polk stated in the interview that he is being blackballed because he is a Hoover's member. According to court documents, the Hoovers are a criminal street gang operating in Oregon known to engage in acts of violence including murder, robbery, and drug dealing. The Hoovers originated in Los Angeles in the late 1960s and established a presence in Portland in the early 1980s. I assume the labels are scared of like all kinds of different artists because it doesn't yeah, seem like no that stops them from signing them though. Uh... I mean, I could say not because Empire fooling me, but that that have a lot to do with it. Just Hoover, period. You think? Yeah. Interesting. They don't want us with no hoops, thank you. <laughs> Adam followed up with more questions throughout the interview, one of which was about the top five rappers from the Hoovers. Polk and his friend claimed that everyone in the Hoover gang was doing rather well and that they didn't really have any top five rappers. Who's the top five Hoover rappers of all time? And please think about this a lot. Before you said you answer, of all this, time? We're talking the Mount Rushmore. What you, you talking mean? about right now? That's rapping right no, now. I ain't gonna lie time. to you that on that time. type of level. You gotta go old heads and shit oh, too. Oh my kids, I'm gonna tell you. What's the truth. your top five? I don't even do that. That's what I'm saying. All my everybody. homies is hard. Yeah, all my homies is hard. I wouldn't judge hard. nobody. Yeah, I'll all my homies is hard. All of us top five oh right now. All the homies is top five. When Adam asked about Polk's feelings over his rival gang members replacing the H with a different letter, the mood in the room shifted. Similar to how Blood and Crips work, Blood substitute the C with the B and Crips replacing B with the C. In Los Angeles, it's common to use word phrases like these without stating the initial letter of a rival gang's name. Frustrated, Polk and his friend asked Adam why he would say anything so disrespectful say it in front of you but the 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 replacing of the h's with things in words has created some very viral catchphrases that you see in like the youtube comments and shit like what that what is he talking about you said what i'm trying to say <laughs> it without like, saying it wait no you lost me i ain't gonna be turning the h to that sn Nah, you not. We know you're not yeah, gonna say it, but it's weird, like, like, yeah. Why would you ever? You know what that if, is? If that's yeah, the, weird, that's this in the set, right? So, so like, yeah, we, we, we everybody know weird. weird. Yeah, I'm everybody. just wondering what you guys think of it. What you like mean? Like how offensive it ranks right now? Boy, this nigga freaky. <laughs> <laughs> at this point, Polk had lost interest in the interview and was at a loss for words. For a moment, the room was silent. He and his companion then proceeded to curse at their rivals, even cursing at Adam, before getting up and walking away, making up a story about having traffic to avoid. He crazy. That's too freaky. You wanna know how we feel about it? Yeah. Make a f goof up on the day. Is, is it like the N-word? Like What's up with goof? <laughs> That's how we it's feel. Weird. It's like that. It f yo, I know everybody, you some weird whoever feel any type of way about that, whoever feel any type of way about us, everything you stand for. Your mama, Plus your you grandmama. With them, dead homie. Plus you, because you just did some weird shit. You, that's offensive to even ask about that. Yeah, because you like. You see, y'all just weird. jumped. I you jumped said, through hoops we, to not bro, say it. You said we went from. You said crazy. We went from crazy, bro. A word crazy. Into this, and, and then sad. you just said, oh, a lot of people. You said some way out crazy, crazy shit, homie. I tried to cover it up. Nah, it ain't no covering up. Why would you do that? Cause yeah. you with them weird ass. You with them people. I'm with everybody. <laughs> Next right. subject. Let's see what else we got here. All right. Um. What time is it? <laughs> it's actually six o'clock. Yeah, I gotta go. It's times traffic. <laughs> You're over it. Uh -huh. Trying to avoid the forty minute mark. Yeah, yeah. Freeway. <laughs> wow. Okay. Well, it's just me and you, buddy. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, we have Charleston White. He is well known for being the Uncle Rookus in hip hop. During an interview in a studio in Atlanta. White was being interviewed when a transgender woman entered the set. White was not having it, he immediately cut the interview short. He said to the hosts that he anticipated 20 women being present on the scene. He began yelling interview over. You couldn't get 20 women to go fuck. Interview over. Interview over. White added that he is not gay and he does not play with males. 
he really tightened things up in the room. He was yelling he does not play with men, he wants 20 women as stated in the contract. After all, he decided to depart, but not before demanding his money for the interview, with the studio staff on set seeming as though they were unsure of who was going to pay him. This is another one from White. When asked what he was on the Crazy TV podcast, White said he was an angry man, much like most black men who are shooting up the neighborhood and gang banging. What? Like what you be on? Like what's your angle? Like like the way like what you? I'm an angry nigga. I figured I, I wake up just like the rest of that shoot up the neighborhood. I wake up angry just like everybody else. A nigga that go to the club that don't pay attention to no. After a while, everyone in the room was talking over one another and White got up and left the room, saying, give them their money. That's why I don't like talking to young niggas. Nigga, I ain't young. How are you? I ain't young. How old are you? I'm old enough to know I'm staying on business answering <laughs> questions. How, how do you? Because you ask me a question and you won't let me answer it. You ask me a question. Yeah, but you want some police shit. I asked you something. You crazy. You, 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 What's the man, first question? Let me see man, how old that guy's name is. Get them niggas back their money. They want to let me ask some questions. Get them niggas back their money. Man, I'm not talking to them niggas. Hey, man, get your old what? ass back. Hey. This next rapper just stood up and left the interview before it even started. DW Flame was at the No Jumper podcast when Adam said something that pissed him off to make him leave. Before the interview started, Adam said Flame had a bad B energy. Adam made it seem as a joke, but Flame took it personal. Okay, this is the thing about DW is that, no disrespect. Oh my God, don't do that. You kind of have bad energy. Like, you want us to be on top of making sure, like, you know what I mean? Like, he wants us to like really be hitting him up to get him to come to the party. No? Don't do that. Is too much? <laughs> Is he mad for it? Later on DW Flame was interviewed again to talk about the situation but this time Adam was not present. He said that he had no issues with Adam, but said Adam must pick how he play with him, because he is not other rappers who like joking around. DW Flame added that Adam must come back to reality because he is too stuck in fantasies. No, you know he get to he get to playing so much with these other niggas. Yeah. That you know he 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 sometimes got to get brought back to real life. Right, 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 right. You feel right. me cuz that shit ain't real life what yeah. niggas is doing. DW Flame claimed to have had an opportunity to speak with Adam off camera and threatened to beat him up if he did it again. I also pulled Adam to the side off camera like real niggas do. What so, you do? And holler that cuz off camera. I told cuz, I'm gonna slap the fuck out you, nigga. You ain't tell Adam that cuz. Told cuz, I held cuz up, pin, held cuz up by his drawers on the door. Do what he do though? Nah, I ain't do all that. <laughs> nah, he was probably. But like, I'm saying, I went in there, I pressed my issue, <laughs> as yeah. I should, behind camera like you do when you holler at your home. Right, 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 right. We say what's up to each other, kids and shit on camp. Like, you know, like, yeah. so. This guy right here managed to turn his life around. FYB J. Main was part of the Gangster Disciples, from Chicago, he turned to Muslim and began pushing peace after he saw plenty of his friends falling victim to the streets. He is part of the drill rap scene. While FYB J. Main was being interviewed, he looked out the window and noticed a truck with a number of men. Once he noticed the men in the truck, J. Main's eyes were constantly outside, 
making it difficult for him to concentrate during the interview. He claimed the men had firearms on them when they stepped out of the truck while he was clinging to something. Long live. Who coming in the trap, bro? Who coming in the trap, bro? Who coming in the trap, bro? Ain't, ain't nobody text me. Uh, they got pipes. They got pipes. Jay Main went on to say that he was uneasy about the interview site since it allowed individuals to come and leave as they pleased. We good. Gotta I, get that, uh, I just wanna say I, long. I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't trust, um, being here at this location like that, cause, um, it be a lot of people, um, coming in here and I'm, I'm just trying to push the peace right now and a lot of people, um, they been acting weird up, my clout been going up, so, I don't, I don't really trust everything that's been going on lately for real, for real. Um, Jay Main, who was staring out the window as though the folks in the truck were coming for him, asked the interviewer how much longer the interview would last. He said that one individual was carrying a gun. He concluded the interview abruptly and left. Going on lately for real, for real, um, I feel you, bro. Actually, um, how long, how long you gonna be, how long we finna be? Um, I mean, as long as you want me to, you know, um, I'm appreciative that you giving me an interview, bro. So, I mean, as long as FYBJ Main feel like giving status bro, update. I'm just saying, I don't feel comfortable in these locations. Like, I don't know. I know that guy had a gun on him when he came in, bro. Oh, come on. What you mean, bro? Like, I don't have to, I don't, I, I don't, I don't like being in these type, because I'm getting bigger, so I don't like to be in these type of facilities, bro. Like, I don't even have it controlled. Like, I feel like that's uncontrolled. What's that about, Kyle? I mean, we're at Trap Baby Studios, and yeah, everybody right. does record here. Right, all right, so look. I'm gonna wrap it up, Kyle. I appreciate you, bro. Okay. You will walk me out, bro. Right. Most definitely. FYBJ Man walks out of another interview for the second time. Those who were watching the podcast asserted that Jay Main had the skit planned out in advance. Since Jay Main is well known for his skits, you may recall his appearance on the Say Cheese podcast, where he claimed to be signed to Lil Durk and had OTF tattooed on his forehead. Next on the list is the rapper who is part of the FBG. FBG Butta was previously on murder accusations, he ended up serving seven years in prison. When Butta and Lil J were questioned by the police in the interrogation room, Lil J claimed that Butta was offered Pepsi and Italian beef for a lesser sentence in which he snitched. Can we talk about that? Yeah, we talking about Italian beef and Pepsi? I'm talking about, I'm talking about Butter. Italian beef and Pepsi, I don't know who Butter is, man. I don't know that, no that's Butter, the, man. That's what, you, that's what you call him now? That's what he called himself. That's what he was eating in that room, pointing them statements out and shit. In an interview with 607 UNC, Butta was asked about how his relationship with Lil J went sour. Butta claims the relationship went sour when Lil J came out of prison and called him a snitch. Before Butta could finish his story, 607 UNC provided him with Pepsi and Italian beef, which pissed Butta off. The interview ended right there. Honestly, you hear me, Unc? We all had a chance to live this life. Like, he came on, man. He blew me up, you know? He mentioned me and he gave me, he gave me a, a way in, right? Just by mentioning me, right? Because if it was him and it was me in his position, I wouldn't have gave his ass a mean or nothing. You wouldn't say nothing about him? I wouldn't have said nothing about him. You gotta say look gay or something. No, say something. I wouldn't have said nothing. Okay. I would yeah. I took it. Only thing, only thing that did was he gave me a voice. And he didn't want me to have a voice anyway as it as is, right? So I mean, I look, didn't do that. Look, the paperwork, even even the shit that he say, man, you know that <laughs> Rosley, eh? Mine's getting deep. I got something for you. This is getting so deep, bud. This is getting so deep. I want you to keep going, bud. That's what I want. I got something for you. Keep nah, going. man. What? What? Keep going, going bud. That's what I want. We this. got to keep going, bud. What's this, Lord? Hey, hey, brother, I tell you, this this premium roast beef, bud. That's what I want. This that premium, bud. You think they gonna roast me on this? I don't even eat red meat no more. Give it to one in training. He probably ready. Nah. Let's go. 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 Let's go.
I'm gonna say I don't know. We we talk about some deep. This 10:53. I'm out of here, man. Like, hey, you going you know, Where you here. going, butter? Come on, butter. Don't do, don't do that, butter. Where hey. you going? Thank you for watching. Please like the video and subscribe to the channel for more upcoming videos.